So without further ado, Shravan, the floor is yours. I'm very much looking forward to hear your research on backsheets and encapsulation. Okay, thank you, Michael. I'm just uh, sharing my screen. Hope you are seeing the screen, right? Yeah. Full view, all good. Okay. So I'm just gonna switch in the camera. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, as Michael introduced, I'm Shravan Chundari, Head of Technology at Tang News. Today I'm going to provide a preview of uh, our Tang News uh, market survey on back sheets and encapsulations version 2022. So before I go into the main topic of uh, my presentation, <clears throat> I would like to give a uh, you know take this opportunity to provide a brief introduction of our company. We are actually two companies and we are two platforms. Tang News is an open platform. That means uh, all the publications uh, can be accessed for free. We actually cover a wide spectrum of topics, uh, you know, such as uh, reports on advanced PV technologies. We also publish market surveys on various production equipment and process consumables. And uh, of course, Backsheet also comes into this segment. And uh, when it comes to MISCO, it's our consulting arm through which uh, we provide consulting services, of course, uh, for a fee. Um, we provide consulting <clears throat> services uh, in the area of uh, technical research and uh, market intelligence covering most part of the supply and value chain of the PV. Um, as I mentioned, my today's uh, presentation is a summary of our market survey and uh, back sheets and encapsulation material, um, which essentially summarizes the important developments associated with these uh, two polymer wraps used in uh, module making. Um, these are the back sheets and encapsulation, of course, uh, and our survey also includes a detailed description of products uh, from the leading suppliers and the survey participants. Like all our uh, publications released on Tang News platform, um, this report will also be available for uh, free in the report section of our website to download. Um, so just, uh, you know, Understanding the importance of the back sheets in module making, both quality wise and cost wise, um, we have been publishing the market survey and back sheets uh, since uh, 2017. Um, then encapsulation uh, materials are also equal, uh, are equally important, I would say. So um, then, and some of the companies have also started offering both uh, back sheets and encapsulations. So, and they also have a complementary nature. So that's why we thought of covering both back sheets and encapsulations in one segment, uh, in one publication. So we published our combined market survey on back sheets and encapsulation materials, uh, um, you know, from, from the last three editions. So this is our third edition co covering both. You know, um, I would say our uh, survey has received really an overwhelming response. Uh, needless to say that uh, all the market leaders uh, of the back sheet and encapsulation segment have, have responded to our survey. But if there are anyone out there, of course there are, but uh, if you are still interested, uh, please uh, let us know. But this year's survey, we kind of closed it, but uh, we can definitely include you in next year's survey. So we will contact you at that time. And yes, so please note that taking part in our survey is free. So coming to the stats of this current survey, you can see that 14 companies has uh, responded uh, in total uh, by providing the specifications for as many as 132 products. So compared to last year, we have 
three new companies, um, two Indian companies, Renesis and Enrich, and uh, one Chinese company that is uh, Sinopore. Another change is uh, Borealis has changed its uh, business model uh, from B2C to B2B in terms of their encapsulation solution. So last year they listed their encapsulation products, but uh, now they want to remain as a resin supplier for both back sheets and encapsulations. So the products of the company are not listed here. Um, but of course, the company did provide the input as a component supplier. Um, Dow, Dupont, Selenes, and Fubmotec are the other leading companies uh, uh, that are uh, responded uh, that, that that have provided the input as a component uh, supplier. So as mentioned earlier, um, there are companies that supply both back sheets and encapsulations, such as Hands of Us, Cybrid, Crown, and Renesis. Then Swag, High UV, Sinopot, and Enrich are the exclusive encapsulant suppliers. Uh, Ferron, Lucky Film, Koveme, Jollywood, Endurance, and Shingi Urja are pure back sheet suppliers. So as for the survey, we divided the back sheet survey into two streams. So one is uh, fluoropolymers and non-fluoropolymers, then EVA, uh, you know, the encapsulant uh, into EVA and non-EVA um, segments. So survey lists 86 back sheet products and 46 uh, encapsulation models. So um, I, I probably, keeping in the view of the time, probably I should uh, skip this uh, slide the basics of the back sheet probably all know. So back sheet has evolved from being a fluoropolymer on the both sides to um, inside the e-layer, then uh, a PVDF replacing the, uh, the Tedler on the front side, then eventually also PET became on the, on the air side, then also coating based back sheets on front and on, on air side as well as inner side. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so the the back sheet actually lies in the outer layer. So as in the past, the market is really dominated by by fluoropolymers, as you can see. Um, actually, but there is a significant change compared to past. Actually. PBDF has led the segment. It had a more than 50% of market share, but very high price of uh, PBDF had, has actually led the market to opt for other configuration. And CPC has really taken the advantage of the situation um, due to its uh, lower cost, of course. And other non-fluoropolymers are also enjoying a little bit of traction um, because of the high price of the uh, PVDF. Here you can see our estimate for uh, the market shares, like you know the CPC, which is nothing but the double side coating. It has 50% share. So TPT, uh, the Tedler based back sheets, at least on on one side, has around 10%, and uh, PET got 10%, and PVDF got 22%, and there are others that including the the co extruded back sheet. Uh, uh, it got uh, four percent. So um, backsheet uh, as a segment uh, has managed to register a fifteen percent growth uh, uh, in global shipments in twenty twenty one, with a total shipment of uh, seven hundred and thirty million square meters in twenty twenty one, and. Uh, uh, a few backseat makers has said that uh, have said that uh, this might reach 807 million meters squared this year. So the market is mainly dominated by two companies, uh, Cybrid and Jollywood. Um, but uh, Cybrid has been the market leader since uh, 2014. Um, but from 21 on, Jollywood became the market leader. And again, the reason is a PVDF high price because Cybrid has been traditionally 
uh, relying on uh, PBDF-based uh, backsheet called its proprietary KPF structure, while Jollywood has been mainly focusing on CPC structure. So when the market really moved to the CPC structure, Jollywood got really great advantage of the situation. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I think the pages are skipping a lot. Yeah, I think we talked about this. Um, just to give you an indication of the price. So we, we, uh, as I was so much emphasizing on the price in my presentation. So this is uh, a, a price what we collected so please don't take this as an absolute value because this might vary from geographical region and also from customer to customer. But what we what we notice that uh, most of the back sheets have higher price in 2021, mainly because every regime had a high price during that time. But PVDF remained to be high, whereas. Uh, other uh, uh, compositions like PET, they managed to reduce the price. Uh, you know, the, the resin price has reduced. So that's why the, the back sheet price has also reduced. So is the case with CPC because um, in CPC also, PET is the, the, the core layer. So with re reduction of the price of uh, uh, PET, the CPC price has also, also reduced. So because of the low price, CPC is really attracting the market currently. And uh, this is also a key motivation that a lot of uh, market players are also focusing non-fluoropolymers, especially based on PET. I'm coming to the important uh, 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 list of trends. Um, leading backsheet makers are expanding really heavily on, on CPC. So Cybrid, for example, I think they are going to shift a lot of capacity to CPC. Then residential as a segment is becoming very important for backsheet. As we all know, black backsheets uh, improve the aesthetics, but uh, black backsheets also compromise on the reflectivity. So in order to counter that, particular aspect, companies are increasingly coming up with high reflectivity black back sheets. Um, it's interesting. Then uh, high water vapor uh, uh, barrier property, you know, that could be very helpful for hydrophobic structures such as uh, heterojunction is also attracting a little attention, though the main responsibility is on the shoulders of the encapsulation suppliers. But I think a few backsheet makers are also doing their part of the job. And uh, sustainability, uh, interestingly, is attracting a little bit of uh, uh, attraction. So low carbon foot footprint, recyclability, all these aspects are also kind of attracting a little uh, attention. So, for example, companies like Crown, they are mainly promoting non-fluoropolymers, uh, as you can, as you will see in our cyber, uh, in our survey. And then Cybrid is also building a, a sizable amount of capacities uh, with non-fluoropolymers. Uh, uh, then the choice is uh, here mainly with uh, PET. Then, and also a little bit of poly olefin based back sheets. Then, co extrusion process is also getting some, some encouragement on this account. Um, the advantage of uh, uh, co extrusion process is that uh, it enables making multi layer back sheets uh, in one single step directly from the resin. Of course, the benefits are well known. So, you don't have to use any glue, and there is no risk of interlayer delamination and yeah, power consumption is also low. Um, Endurance is one company that is uh, commercially offering such products uh, uh, in a massive scale. Then Borealis is operating on a B2B level where the company is offering its uh, resins that can support the co-extrusion based on all PP configuration back sheets. Uh, excuse me. Then uh, the most important trend 
is of course the transparent batch sheet. Uh, so market did adapt it to transparent batch sheet during the high prices of the glass. Um, transparent back sheet products in all structures are available. But again, I think CPC is the main configuration here because uh, uh, it can. It is the only configuration as of now that can really compete with glass in price. But of course, there is a big gap between glass and transparent back sheet. Um, an interesting um, trend here, what we learned is um, the module makers who are exporting to US are preferring transparent back sheets. There are several reasons like uh, companies prefer to have 3.2 mm glass on the front because typical uh, uh, bifacial glass glass back sheets are using 2 mm or less uh, 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 front cover uh, glass. So this might not be uh, as reliable as 3.2 mm and uh, freight costs and uh, shipping costs, all these are the reasons, but I think we will hear more from the panel discussion on, on this topic. And uh, India could be another interesting market uh, as we heard from a few backsheet makers uh, for the transparent backsheet. And uh, a, a interesting variant of the transparent backsheet is a bit great. So it actually elevates uh, one of the major uh, backlog of the of the bifacial technology that, uh, you know, it has a less uh, performance compared to its monofacial variant. That's mainly because um, the light that is passed, uh, that, that uh, uh, incident uh, uh, on the cell gaps, it's transparent, so it passes through. So there is no reflectivity. So that's why um, uh, there is a, a kind of an interesting grid that can fill these gaps and reflectivity can still take place. But this concept was initially implemented uh, or uh, uh, um, uh, invented by the uh, glass makers, but then uh, backsheet makers have also adapted it. And uh, this is uh, really interesting, but a few companies are employing it, but uh, it has one uh, issue still that has to be addressed is there is uh, the alignment accuracy uh, requirement is very high. So you need very sophisticated uh, production equipment for that. And even a uh, black grid on a white back sheet is also getting some kind of popularity. So the logic here is um, you can still use a white back sheet that can be beneficial when you are using uh, bifacial modules in, uh, uh, sorry, uh, bifacial cells in monofacial modules using white back sheet. So some of the UV that is getting passed through that can be still reflected, but uh, it can still take care of the, it, it can still have a aesthetics of a all black batch, uh, all black module appearance. I think this is an interesting thing. I think this is also getting a lot of traction in, in these days. So on the matter of the sustainability, Koveme it can get a, a very special attention here because uh, in cooperation with Selenis, the company has made uh, commercialized a back sheet that is based on a recycled pad. So here, uh, one third of the recycled pad is blended with a virgin polymer to, to make a back sheet. But the ultimate goal is to have a end-to-end -end, uh, recycling. So Kovame is already commercializing and also adding several other advanced features onto the onto this particular back sheets like you know high barrier reflectivity and also high reflectivity uh, yeah high barrier reflectivity and high barrier uh, of uh, wtr um so the story of the encapsulation was was really straightforward but not anymore um the eva has been enjoying a monopoly for over 3 decades but polyolefins came um, you know, as an alternate for bifacial modules, uh, especially EVA was not able to address all the issues with the bifacial, especially on the rare side. So, but P PVOE as a single layer was not able to uh, address uh, 
uh, all alone. So there was it was facing some processing issues such as uh, bubble formation and slipping effect with the with the ribbons. So this actually gave birth to co-extruded multi-layer encapsulation material, um, which is POE sandwiched between two EVA films. Uh, it, uh, the structure is popularly called as EPE. So it's actually gaining a lot of market share. <laughs> but again, with the new advanced cell architectures coming into the market, uh, the, the pure POE is also gaining attraction recently. So here, I would like to give you a, a brief summary of uh, uh, the, the market share as in past EVA is still leading the, the transparent EVA, but not as much as in past because a lot of this is taken by the white EVA and uh, the POE, single layer POE got around 11% and EPE got 24% uh, uh, according to our research. Um, coming to the trends in the encapsulation, I will not take a lot of time. I think we have uh, two more speakers who can really speak uh, in, in depth about the encapsulation trends. But uh, as a summary, nothing, nothing groundbreaking is happening uh, in terms of EVA. Um, you know, white EVA is kind of becoming a standard in monofacial. And... Uh, uh, there is also some processing issues that are coming up with the uh, white EVA due to its brittleness. So the co-extrusion technology used for PVOE is also employed here to make transparent and white EVA uh, co-extrusion like EW structure or EWE structure. And uh, trends in poly, uh, PVOE, uh, you know, as, as I already uh, mentioned, co-extruded uh, um, EPE structures have really uh, came into the market. They are really uh, providing a lot of benefits compared to the single layer EVA, but this is more, the co-extruded uh, EPE structures are mainly employed on the right side of bifacial perk modules. And uh, coming to the the most important trends in the in the encapsulation material is uh, high in. efficiency. Yeah. yeah, Michael. So yeah, so as I mentioned here, uh, the the single layer POEs are coming back into the market because of the uh, because of the high uh, requirement uh, on for the top con, especially as far as the hetero junction. Um, EPE structures are are still okay to use. And then um, UV, uh, you know, for heterojunction structures, um, like conversion films are being introduced. So here I come to the uh, conclusion. Um, so in, in one sentence, if I have to summarize the trends in back sheets, I think price is the most important thing. And on this account, uh, CPC is really getting a lot of traction. And of course, uh, non-fluoropolymers are also getting a lot of attention. And with respect to encapsulation material, EVA, it, there is nothing groundbreaking, but uh, white EVA is taking its place, especially on the, on the red side. As far as the PVOE, EPE is mainly used as the red side of the bifacial. And uh, the top con structure is, as of now, requiring PVOE. Uh, uh, plain PVOE structures and for heterojunction, a UV light conversion film uh, is under development and some are also commercializing it. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Shravan.